Elder Darrell, if I get led to any of the scriptures to read for me. We're going to start out with Matthew, the fourth chapter. I'm sorry. Ecclesiastes, the fifth chapter. Chapter 5, verse 4 and 5. I'll read. I'll read this. When you have it, please say amen. 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 And the word reads, When thou vowest a vow unto God, defer not to pay it, for he has no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. Better it is that thou shouldst not vow than thou vow shouldst vow and not pay. Every, myself, we're all going to a, we're getting elevated. We're going to a higher height. And we made a vow as even being ordained as ministers, we took an oath to an office. Amen. And to say this, the, the Bible says it's better. You need to make it. If you make it, don't break it. And that's the top. Make it, don't break it. Amen. Uh, if you can read for me, Matthew chapter 5 verse 37 37 mm -hmm. 5 and 37 mm -hmm. but let your communication be yea yea nay nay for whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil the scripture is saying let your yes be yes and your no be no. Don't add nothing to it, the simple yes or no. And, and to, to piggyback on top of that, a lot of times, sometimes we'll say yes with our mouth, but the thought is so far off. So we have to come in line. You know, Christian will let Daryl preach the word about righteousness. It's a way of living. This is a way of living. This is not a way of acting, it's a way of living. And we have to come up to that standard of living because we are being put over people that are going to look at us as, as we speak this word, define the word, and break it down. Are we living this word or are we just doing actions of this word? We need to be living, speaking epistles of this word. Amen. There's no difference from it. And if you go on to Matthew 6, and 24. No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and men. We can't serve two. You know, the Bible says we have to come out from amongst. Not sit in the council. We have to realize, you know, we, we say certain things with our mouth. We're held accountable for everything that comes out of our mouth. Every thought and gesture. We have a thing called repentance. Even though we repent, there's still circumstances of what we've said and done. Yes, we are covered by grace and mercy, but don't use grace and mercy to cover sin. And to say this, you know, wait on them, hold fast, wait on them, be steadfast, be led by the spirit of the living God. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, tarry and ask for the Holy Ghost. It will teach you, it will lead you to the place where, to the place we're going to and continue to go as we go on and on, notice the higher the level, the enemy going to come more and more at us. But it's the blood of Jesus that covers us. The power is in the name of the blood. It's in the blood. We can't
cannot and and going out into this new year of 2018, going into 2019, get rid of your baggage. What whatever you had in 2018, whatever that's still lingering from 2017, whatever still lingering from 2016, from 2015, 2014, that's still attached to you, you better let it go. Because where you're going, you don't need it. Be holding on so much things, and thank God for the Holy Ghost, because you know what? Sometimes our brain, our, our head, this thing right here called the head, our brain inside, you try to hide some stuff, and he'll pop it right up in front of you. You think you got rid of this? You think you, you forgave Johnny from 20 years ago? You here you go. Here it is, right here. I'm gonna black on plastic right in front of your face. And those little things that we hold on to hinder us. We should be further, so much further down the road, but we're hindered by the little things. Those little things destroy bigger things. And to say this, the, the men in here, the young, the men in here, yes, mama's a woman, but mama's married to pop. That's a different, different territory. Wait on them. If, you, if he's going to send you somebody, he's going to send you somebody. Don't be like David. Stare at Bathsheba too long. And wound up like Samson getting his hair cut. Watch me. Oops. See, sometimes we, 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 we ain't, we're not connected to the one we have. So if you're not connected to the one you have, why are you looking at another one? Because that one don't belong to you either. And to say, to go on and say this, time is not ours. Time does not belong to us. He controls time. He is the creator of all things. There's a reason for everything that happens under the sun and under the moon and the stars. We can't question it. It's just a process we have to go through. But by and by, we'll get an understanding. Amen. By and by, we will get an understanding. And as we go on into ministry, a lot of times, we override the Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord said, you're going to minister this word of, word of God. And we go on and say, I'm going to give you an ultimatum. I'm going to go do this for a little while. But then when I come back, if you're still waiting for me and ready for me, then I'm going to do what you want me to do. No, it don't work like that. Doesn't happen. When he calls you, when he calls you, he will prepare you to speak. Put you on the pastures after his own heart to teach and to guide you to what is right and what is wrong. To speak this word in season and out of season. Do not be afraid of their faces. For the Bible says he will go on with you. There is nothing. Fear is of the enemy. Bible. Fear is of the enemy. Never, there's so it's sad so many people in the body of Christ fear everything. The fear of man and what man can do with a control of a button or a phone call. But they won't fear God that created the heavens and the earth and created everything around them. <coughs> and if you really go into the Bible, it talks about we everybody wants to talk about how glorious and, and how beautiful it is. To serve God, but listen, there's a wrath side of God that you don't want to be a part of. We want to stand and teach people things, but we're not standing what we're teaching them ourselves. It's coming to the point, the body of Christ, the body of Christ, a lot of the body, a lot of the 
the houses of God are looking like movie theaters instead of houses of God. An infirmary for souls. But there's only that few, that remnant, that will speak the word in season and out of season. Now, won't be afraid of their faces. Walk like Christ did. Walk like the apostles did. They spit on them. They spit on them. They beat them to an unrecognizable pulp. They only said very few words. Very few. Are we really Christ like? Are we to that point? Are we to it? It's just a preparation. We just have to prepare daily, daily, yet be more like Christ. Get out of the flesh. Get out of the flesh. Mama's favorite line. Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth. And faith, we need to have faith. We say it, we're speaking, we're talking out of our mouths. But when we step out, it's like when you were a little kid, you used to test the, hot, the bathtub board if it was real hot with your toe. Same concept. Faith comes by hearing the word. But then it also says faith without works is dead. So the faith that you hear by the word is to be work. Amen. And to say we have to do what thus said the Lord. Not what we want to do. It's not a it's not an ultimatum thing. It's not a if I, you know, it makes me think of Wimpy from Popeye, the cartoon, and gladly pay a Tuesday for a hamburger today. It doesn't work like that. He gonna chase you, he gonna chase you, he gonna chase you, and he gonna chase you, and either you're gonna do it his way, or you're gonna pay the consequences if you don't do it his way. People gotta realize, yes, you're the grace and mercy will come to you. You'll go to that certain extent and keep on going, keep on going, keep on going. But you gotta realize the enemy will bless you too. We gotta check our eyes to see if we have somebody's thumbnail in our eyeballs. Are we really seeing what, what God is showing us? Is it really God? Is it God? Or is it us making decisions to let the enemy say, here, I'm going to put this in your eye. It looked good, same picture, but it's really come true. You can, you can go so far. That's like, mommy uses this thing about being a, a cow, being a cow. You can go so far and so far and feed and feed and feed of things that you're not supposed to be feeding on you be out of the pasture. <laughs> then you turn around. What happened? It was that phone that was in your eye. That was a thumb in your eye. Maybe a little dirt under the nail. And that made you blind it a little bit. And be humble. Humble at the foot of the cross. Humbleness at the foot of the cross. Humbleness at the foot of the cross. That's the bottom of the cross. The bottom of the cross. Don't stand on top of the cross and look down from the top of the cross because you're in trouble. Oh, Humpty Dumpty. Sat on the wall. Oh, Humpty Dumpty had a great wall. Oh, King Tors. Can you make me put Humpty Dumpty back together again? Don't be high minded, stiff necked, boasting in yourself. Boast on God for what God is doing for you. But don't get misconstrued. When you're professional, then you've got problems. 
Then there's the issue. So you can't be double. You can't be double minded. You can't be double tongued. The Bible says, the Lord's Prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. We are all a royal, we are a royal priesthood. We're blessed. But there's a standard. There's a standard of being a priesthood, a royal priesthood. And it's the vow that we've taken, that we've written in that book, that book that we go before, before we enter into those gates, it's written in that book. Date, time, everything. And please, procrastination, lying, cheating, <laughs> doing everything, and saying it's of God. No, it's not. And please don't throw stones at somebody else's sin as they're climbing up the hill when you are sin yourself. Don't bury somebody. Give them a hand and pull them up. Because the Bible says love the sinner, but you hate the sin. But you don't compromise the word for what they do. You speak it in season and out of season. To all of us that are getting ordained, <laughs> another level. We're held with more responsibility, more service to speak this word uncut. The uncut gospel of Jesus Christ. From Genesis to Revelations. From Genesis to Revelations. I'm going to say it one more time. Genesis to Revelations. Not just the Old Testament. Not just the New Testament. Not just the four gospels. The 66 books. Because the Old Testament speaks into the New Testament. And the New Testament recollects back to the Old Testament. Do not dissect this word and just be parts of Bible. Do not add or take away from the word. The word is the word. And please, no matter their face, or who they are, no matter who they are. The word will always be the word. Mommy, daddy, your sister, your brother.